After decades of decline, millions of sharks are flourishing in the Gulf of Mexico, including one of the most feared apex predators on the planet. This evening, we take you on board a ship where saving the shark is the life mission of a Bay Area marine biologist. So much of the ocean is undiscovered. In a sea of saltwater explorers. I'm constantly surprised doing ocean research. There are a myriad of mysteries below the surface. The ocean's a really big place and, and so much is, is yet unexplored out in the open sea. One mile off the South Carolina coast. Sarasota marine biologist Dr. Bob Huter and a team of researchers are about to get up close and personal with one of the most maligned and misunderstood apex predators on the planet. Look at that shark. For two weeks, Huter and other scientists from the nonprofit organization OSEARCH have been on the hunt for great white sharks. There's another one right there. Take a look. And they just hit the mother load. As humans, it was still thrilling to see these animals uh, around us. They are rebounding, and we can see that in catch records. We actually run 25 different projects uh, in parallel with every shark that we bring on board. And we're collecting uh, blood samples, we're taking muscle samples. Uh, some of us are doing ultrasound to look for pregnancy and other things. Uh, they're taking genetic samples. Of course, we're measuring the animals, which is something we can do very accurately when they're on the lift that you can't do in the water. Like a NASCAR pit crew, it's high-speed work designed to save the life of the shark. We limit ourselves to 15, no more than 20 minutes. And safeguard the future of the species. As biologists and as conservationists, we would never do this if we thought the sharks were being harmed. After attaching a GPS tracker, this shark swims away but remains under the watchful eye of scientists who track his journey for years. Beyond where they were going and when, we didn't know why. And the tracking helps us determine why. Great whites are the snowbirds of sharks. Summers in the Northeast, winters in the Southeast, including the Gulf of Mexico. And then they'll leave about the same time after Easter <laughs> and start heading north. In 2021, after attaching a GPS tracker to this 12-foot, 3-inch great white named Scott, Huter and the OSERT scientists tracked Scott's migratory patterns, 9,556 miles in two years, spending last winter swimming off the coast of Venice. Are we seeing more great whites in the Gulf of Mexico? I think we are. They're very far offshore. They're, they're not coming up close to the beach. It's very unusual for one of these animals to come within 20 miles. And most of the time, they're going to be 50 to 100 miles out. But I really think that there's a real strong possibility these animals have learned over eons to avoid this area in case there's red tide. While gray whites are at least 20 miles out in the Gulf, there are many more sharks much closer to shore. In fact, scientists say they're seeing more sharks now than they have in decades. But they see more of us than we do of them. It's pretty obvious somebody's going to get bit. From the shore, they seem like an unwelcome stranger. But from the air, sharks are clearly our neighbors. I think a lot of people would be surprised how often you'll have a packed out beach with people in the water. And then if you put a drone up, there will be a shark and not that far away or even multiple sharks. There are lots of sharks in the Gulf of Mexico. There's millions because we're talking about lots of species. And some people choose to push the boundaries. Great While diving in Stewart Inlet, 17-year-old Nick Bailey documented his face-to-face -face encounter with a great white. I touched the great white! We'll see some bull sharks and sandbar sharks and stuff like that there, but I, never anything like that. For some beachgoers, sharing the water with sharks is mind over matter. It's kind of always in the back of my mind. Florida is the shark bite capital of the world. Last year, there were 16. 17-year-old Addison Bethea lost her leg to a shark while swimming in five feet of water off Keaton Beach. Like, I'm still going to get in the ocean when I heal, get better. I'm still going to do what I love, but don't just let fear ever take your life. Well, the reality is if sharks wanted to feed on humans, they could do it, you know, all day, every day, and it would be a bloodbath. 
While sharks may not be a significant threat to our safety, an increasing number of anglers are concerned they're catching fewer fish, and they blame protections put in place to save sharks. It is affecting their operations to have sharks that are stealing their fish off their lines, or they're catching more sharks than they really care to when they're not targeting them. Come on, Campbell! On this January trip, 12-year-old Campbell Keenan catches the biggest fish of his life, a great white off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. I was a little bit nervous, like, I don't, I don't know if I want to go up against a shark. In the 1990s, I joined longline commercial shark fishermen, 150 miles out in the Gulf of Mexico. What up? Some with hundreds of miles of line. We witnessed dozens of sharks hooked in their overnight haul. We've estimated that about 100 million sharks get killed uh, per year by humans. Today, with state and federal protections, the shark population has rebounded, and moat marine scientists in Sarasota are seeing species of sharks they haven't seen in more than 30 years. A little before Christmas of last year, I was pulling in the line and something enormous was on it and it was just pulling the whole weight. It was a real tug of war. Is that again? The shark came up, it was about 12 feet long and uh, everybody was crying out, it's a this, it's a that and then all of a sudden it's a dusky shark and we all go nuts. Oh! Back on board the OSERT ship, the secrets of the sea are becoming increasingly clear with every catch. Sharks represent in, in some ways, the, the overall health of the ocean. If you don't have a healthy shark population, then the oceans themselves are not healthy. Among the 92 great whites they've tagged is a 13-foot, 4-inch shark they've named Bob. How does it feel having a great white named after you? <laughs> I almost weigh as much as Bob these days. <laughs> With humor, Bob Huter looks to the future heartened and hopeful that a sea creature more than 400 million years old will be around for generations to come. I'm basically an optimist when it comes to the future of the planet. We have to work hard though. We can't just, we can't just ignore the problems and we have it with sharks in the U.S. If we can do it with sharks, I think we can do it with just about anything. Now, the researchers at OSEARCH encourage you to try out the Shark Tracker app and website. I'm tracking Bob right now. It allows you to track those 92 great white sharks and gives you a chance to learn more about these apex predators. We have posted the address on 10tampabay.com, along with some tips on how to swim more safely in an ocean with millions of sharks.